In today's video, we're really going to talk about two major concepts. We're going to learn the properties of a trapezoid and an isosceles trapezoid, which are similar, but they have their differences. And then we're going to learn about the mid-segment of a trapezoid. So first of all, you might want to get out your flow chart so you can fill that in as well. But to start, what is a trapezoid? Trapezoid is under quadrilateral, but please pay attention, it's next to parallelogram. So a trapezoid is not a parallelogram. Where parallelograms have two sets of parallel lines, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with one set of parallel lines. The parallel sides, the pieces that have the arrows on them, that's the only way we're going to know our, that are parallel, are what we call the bases. The pieces that are not parallel in the trapezoid are what we call the legs. And then lastly, since every trapezoid has bases, the pairs along the bases are what we call base angles. So every trapezoid is going to have two pairs of base angles. The next shape we have is, is an isosceles trapezoid. And an isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid. It is just special for a certain reason. The reason it is special is because the legs are congruent. And if the legs are congruent, just like an isosceles triangle, then this is an isosceles trapezoid. If you come to an isosceles trapezoid, and the reason you know it's isosceles is because the legs are congruent, then there's three special things. And the first thing is this, is that each pair of base angles will be congruent. Sorry, I just want to shrink it. Each pair of base angles will be congruent, meaning that this angle here, which is along the base, will be congruent to this angle here, just like an isosceles triangle. And then up here will oops, sorry, also be congruent to this one here. So just like an isosceles triangle, the base angles are congruent in a, in a trapezoid as well. So up here, one, two, no, one, two. I just didn't like that one. The second thing is basically repeating the exact same thing, that if you see a triangle and it has base angles, congruent, then you know it's trying, you know it's isosceles. So it's either, if it's isosceles, you know these base angles are congruent, or if I tell you the base angles are congruent, then you have to know it's isosceles. And the third thing is the diagonals in any isosceles triangle are also congruent. Now, that has nothing to do with a regular trapezoid. None of these are true, but if it is isosceles, this is true. So you have to know those three properties distinct to isosceles, and you have to know these, these properties which are true to a trapezoid. So let's look here. We come to our first math problem, and if you look at this, we have parallel lines, and we only have one set, so we know it's a trapezoid, but now we have markings on it, so we know it's what type? Good, isosceles. And if it's isosceles, I know that base angles are congruent. Now here's another thing. If these are parallel lines and this was a transversal, what must this and this add up to? 180 because they are same side interior. So that's a good way to kind of try to remember which ones have to be the same because these are not going to be the same. And if you look at this picture, this is acute, this is obtuse. This is obtuse, this is acute. So try to pay attention to your picture if you're getting stuck at which one should be congruent. The only in an isosceles trapezoid. So in an isosceles, the base are congruent. So I'm going to set 120 equal to 3y. I'm going to divide, and y is 40 degrees. x, x is 60 degrees, so I don't have to do any math. x is 60. Pause this video right here. Go ahead and try this one. I know that it's a trapezoid because it only has one set of parallel lines, but now I have tick marks, so I know it's isosceles. So go ahead and figure out which ones you think are equal. Um, it's a little harder in the fact that they're not, not, one's not real acute, one's not real obtuse, but you have to remember it goes along the parallel lines. So pause the video, go ahead and try it. 
All right, so the first thing I did was set 6y plus 2 equal to 92, solve, and y is 15. <clears throat> to figure out x, I take 88 equal to 11x, and x is 8. So that's an example of angles in an isosceles trapezoid. This next picture, I just asked you what's different about this trapezoid. First of all, um, First of all, yours doesn't have angles on it, I mean um, parallel symbols. You want to make sure that you have parallel symbols so that you see. The one thing you want to check is that yours has parallel symbols, so you want to make sure that um, you understand it's a trapezoid because without the parallel lines, you don't really know it's a trapezoid. And the only thing that would be different about this trapezoid is that it is a right trapezoid. Let's look at the next concept. The next concept talks about a mid-segment, and the mid-segment of a trapezoid is a segment that connects the midpoints of the what. If these were the parallel lines, the top and the bottom, then these are called the legs. So a mid-segment connects the legs All right, and what are we going to do with a mid-segment? We're going to be able to find either the mid-segment itself or we're going to be able to find the bases. This is in a trapezoid. Top and the bottom should be parallel, so I should say that, or I should say in the directions that it is a trapezoid. So if I was teaching, I would tell you that. The concept of a mid-segment is this, is if that it is in the middle of the legs, then it is the average Average, meaning bottom plus top, equals the middle if you divide by 2. So the way I'm going to set this equation up, and this happens to be a hard, one of the harder problems. You'll see the next one's kind of easier. But here's the concept. I'm going to take the top base and the bottom base, and I'm going to add them together, and I'm going to divide by 2. That's an average. That average will give me the mid-segment. So algebraically, if you can't remember how to solve this, the first thing we're going to do is get rid of the 2. So I'm going to multiply by 2. So I get 27 plus 6x minus 1 equals 20.5 times 2 is 41. Then I'm going to, here I actually, oh, I should add 2. So this should be 42. Sorry about that. So I should, I add one over. You could combine 27 and 1 first, but I didn't. So you could add one over, get 42, subtract 27, and divide, and x would be 2.5. If I plug that back in, this is just 14. So 20.5 should be the average of 27 plus 14. So 27 plus 14 divided by 2 should be 20.5. Let's look at the next one. This happens to be a harder one. Let's look at this one. So my directions, or I would verbally need to tell you, yes, this is a trapezoid. I would not have to tell you it's a mid-segment because you would be able to tell because it's the midpoint of this leg and it's the midpoint of this leg. So 32 is the mid-segment. So take a second, pause the video, see how you would set up the problem, and then see if you can solve algebraically. So what you should have done is take the top and the bottom. So that's 27.5 and x. We're going to divide it by 2 because it's an average and set it equal to 32. So that's where your equation should come from. Algebraically, just to solve, as a reminder, we're going to multiply by 2 to get rid of it. So we're going to get 27.5 plus x equals 64, and then we're going to subtract, and our answer is 36.5. So that one actually is a little easier than the one before it. So I understand this video is a little fast and gets the concepts of we will go over this video again tomorrow as a class. I just wanted to get a head start. Um, fill in your flow chart with the properties of a trapezoid. One set of parallel lines 
and then fill in about isosceles trapezoid. Base angles are congruent, and that legs are congruent, and that the diagonals are congruent. So isosceles trapezoid is very easy. Congruent, congruent, congruent. All right, thank you.